Hey, what's going on YouTube? Captain Scott Brown coming from the Florida Keys here to give you guys some tips and tricks on how Hooked On Family catches its tarpon. So tarpon season is upon us and uh, I got a little box of goodies and tricks up my sleeve to help me catch some with my kids. And so we'll go over a plethora of things all the way from the gear we use to the most requested subject, how my anchor is set up. And I've got a special setup on my anchor. Um, I've only seen a handful of people use it, but it's effective and it's efficient and it help aids us in catching these awesome fish. All right, so let's talk about rods and reels. I'm all about keeping it light. I've got my kids that like to fish too. And so the lighter, the better, all right? So with today's modern technology and fishing, everything has been minimalist. It's been micro-sized. All the mentality around athletics, everything, fishing, hunting, it's all minimalist now and that's awesome because you can carry more gear if you want to and if you don't you still have a light approach to the fishing technique so with that being said I like 6,000 series reels on all my medium heavy action rods and so I like moderate to fast action rods so that way I'm distributing the fight throughout the entire rod and not just the last quarter of the rod that you would get in a very fast action rod so Keep it light, medium heavy, 6,000 series reels. I like to use Cortland's Master Braid whenever it comes to braided line. This is 40 pound on this 6,000 series reel. More than enough to be able to take down a triple digit tarpon. And so we got about 250 to 300 yards on the 6,000 series reel. Connected to that is going to be Cortland's fluorocarbon. And so I love their fluorocarbon. It's like a medium stiffness. It's not too stiff. Great abrasion resistance. I use 40 pound, 40 to 50 pound, about a five foot piece whenever I'm live baiting a uh, live mullet on some of these bridge tarpon. So never had a problem with it. Um, again, you get really good abrasion resistance and minimal amount of stretch. So Cortland makes a very good product whenever it comes to fishing line. It's made in America. You can't beat it. But when it comes to hooks, I've recently switched over from Mustad to Eagle Claw. And Eagle Claw, their series of uh, circle hooks, I'm kind of unfamiliar with them. Um, and I read up on it a little bit and I decided to go with their Trocar series. And I am thoroughly impressed with it. I mean, my hookup ratio has definitely gone from 3 out of 10 tarpon to about 50 to 60%. So we're looking at 5 out of 10 tarpon. And so I use a 6 aught all-purpose trocar from anywhere from 6 to 8 aught. You know, I don't need to go any bigger than that. I usually keep it as small as I can, depending on the bait fish that I'm using. So some of the mullet we're throwing out are 8 to 10 inch mullet, and so you can, you can beef up the hook size on those things. But we do really good on 40 pound braid to 40 pound fluorocarbon connected to like these 6 to 7 knot circle hooks. And so landing ratio definitely went up with them. And, uh, I'm definitely content with that setup. So try to downsize as much as possible, but if you start getting sharked, you know, or if you start putting uh, putting these fish on a really long fight, a really long journey around the ocean, you should probably beef up your tackle, get them to the boat quick, so that way they don't get preyed upon by the apex predators. But with that being said, everyone wants to talk about my anchor setup. And, uh, I kind of combined a couple of other um, of my friends' ideas on the whole anchor idea, or excuse me, the whole anchor concept on speed and efficiency, and uh, this is what I came up with. What you guys want to focus on is being able to get to that anchor quick and being able to release it quickly. And so a lot of you have noticed that I use speed shackles on my anchor system. And so that's definitely increased the speed and efficiency as soon as I hook into a big tarp and I know it's going to take me through the bridge pilings to get that anchor off the front of my boat as quickly as possible. And so as you see here, these are speed shackles. And so basically what it is, is, is as a spring loaded quick release on this little clip here. And all I've got to do is just pull this and then the entire shackle comes loose. All right. So now you're free to dump your float system into the water. This little pool noodle that I've got zip tied to here keeps this at the surface so I can go back and retrieve it um, along with my little crab pot buoy. So 
that's my anchor system. You guys can do this in increments of however you want. Um, I use a really cheap anchor. Never buy one of these nylon coated anchors. They rust through real quick. And so that one was just laying around. And so I still use it. And then whenever it's done rusting through, I'll just throw it away. But super cheap anchor, cheap chain. You know, we're talking flats boats, so you don't need anything crazy. Uh, my increments are 20 feet to the first pool noodle where I got my first speed shackle. And then I think my last one is at 30 feet. And so these speed shackles are great. You guys can find them at West Marine. Um, they're a little pricey, but they pay dividends whenever you need to unshackle your boat from the anchor. And so that way you can chase down the tarpon and then start fighting it. But that's how we do it on Hooked On Family. So that way I'm not worrying about my kids, you know. But be safe out there if you do have the opportunity to get out on the water. For those of you that are isolated and quarantined in your house, I, my thoughts and prayers go out to you guys. I couldn't be pent up in my house for that long. So I definitely feel your guys' pain. Uh, I've had my fair shares of quarantines throughout the past, so I feel you guys. But hopefully these little tips and tricks pay off and you guys land your big triple digits this year. So stay hooked, fam. We'll see you guys next time.